The movie opens in outer space with the starship Avalon on autopilot, heading to the colony world of Homestead 2, during a mass exodus of Earth's population. The crew and the 5,000 passengers are all in hibernation pods for the 120-year journey. It is 30 years into the journey. The ship travels through a meteor storm, diverting power to the forward shields. The ship collides with a giant meteor, and the power blinks. Red alert screens come on in the control area, then quickly return to normal. Something terrible has happened. Jim Preston, a mechanical engineer, wakes up in his pod with a cheery computer voice, telling him that soon they will be arriving at Homestead 2. He is told that it is normal to feel confused and weak after being in hibernation. The wristband on his arm is scanned, and the computer leads him to his cabin where he sleeps. The next day he wakes up, tries to decide what to wear when meeting fellow passengers, then makes his way to a cafeteria where he is the only one. He attends an orientation session about life as a colonist on Homestead, but he is the only one there. The cheery computer-generated instructor cannot understand his question about why no one else is there. Jim goes to the main concourse without help from the information kiosk. He finds an office where he can send a message to the Homestead company that he is warned will be expensive. He sends a message explaining he is the only one awake and needs help, then finds out it will be 15 years before anyone on Earth receives his letter. Jim finds manuals for all the ship equipment. He studies the manual on the hibernation pods but cannot find a way to get it started again once the person has woken up. He cannot get into the area where the crew pods are to try and wake anyone for help, and he cannot get into the command area. His wristband does not give him the proper clearance. Jim finds the robot bartender Arthur, who he can talk to. But the robot is programmed to dispense bartender advice, like if you don't like where you are? Change things. Jim is a general class passenger with a basic cabin, and he breaks into a suite with more excellent amenities. A year passes as Jim uses the ship's entertainment facilities, but without other people he becomes more desperately lonely. He goes to an area where passengers can wear a space suit, and go outside while safely tethered to the ship. Jim contemplates suicide by opening the airlock without a space suit but stops and runs into the pod area. He trips near a pod with a lovely woman inside, Aurora. He studies the passenger profile she had recorded before the ship set sail. She is a journalist traveling to Homestead to have an adventure and learn why people choose to be a colonist. He reads her stories and thinks she is perfect. He wrestles with himself about waking her up, knowing it will doom her to die on the ship. Still, he cannot stand the isolation after a year alone, so he manually makes her pod wake her up, hiding before she can see him. The same cheery computer program wakes Aurora and leads her to her cabin to sleep. Aurora wakes up the next day alone and wanders to the Grand Concourse, where she meets Jim. He tells her the truth about how long he has been awake but doesn't tell her that he woke her up. He has asked Arthur the robot bartender, not to tell Aurora what he has done and Arthur agrees. Aurora and Jim discuss daily what can be tried to fix the pods. Aurora swims runs, and begins to write her story. She asks why Jim left planet Earth, and he says he likes to make things and fix things, and on Earth items get replaced when they break and are not fixed. He wants to live in a house he builds himself. She planned to travel to the colony, spend a year there talking to colonists about why they left Earth, then return to Earth. Aurora is a gold-class passenger and uses her status, to procure more elaborate breakfast meals than his standard clearance entitles him to. After getting to know each other, Jim asks Aurora on a date, and she accepts. After they eat, he takes her to the spacesuit room, where there are two suits, and they both get dressed and go outside. Returning, Aurora is excited, and they go to Jim's cabin and make love. They are happy and have their routine of exercise, watching the stars, and taking advantage of the ship's entertainment and restaurant venues. Another year passes, and it's Aurora's birthday, and Jim plans a special surprise. He makes a ring for her. Going into the bar, Aurora tells Arthur that she and Jim have no secrets. Jim agrees, not realizing that Arthur interprets this, as saying that Jim told Aurora that he woke her up. Jim steps into the men's room, and Arthur tells Aurora what a good choice Jim made to pick her to wake up. Aurora is devastated and furious and tells Jim to stay away from her. One night she enters his cabin while he's sleeping and assaults him with her fists. While she's running, Jim uses a ship's intercom to try and explain himself, but Aurora screams that Jim took her life. While all of this is happening, the control room is more frequently getting alerts of system failures over time. Jim and Aurora have noticed small things like the cleaning robots having system failures. It's now two years since the meteor collision. One day Gus wakes up and appears on the concourse. He is a deck crew chief and has woken up early. Hibernation pods have never failed before, and he explains that something major is wrong. His wristband gets them into the command center, where the ship's automatic diagnostics have failed, and they need to check every deck manually. While Gus runs tests before this can be done, there is a major gravity failure, and Aurora almost drowns in the swimming pool. Gus finds there have been cascading failures, and the computer can make a timeline showing the first failure was two years before. 
Gus determines that the first few failures caused power diversions to try and re-equalize the load, but the load became too heavy, causing more and more failures. The whole ship is in danger of dying in space, which will doom the entire crew and passengers. The main engine area was first affected, but they will have to do a manual inspection to tell where. At this point, Gus collapses. Jim and Aurora take him to the infirmary and put him in the medical auto-diagnostic scanner. His body has multiple necroses, and death is imminent because of the malfunctioning hibernation pod. He puts on his uniform and prepares to die, and gives Jim and Aurora his wristband, so they can access the areas of the ship they need to go to fix things. In engineering, Jim and Aurora find a hole made by a meteorite that goes through some critical areas. Aurora is almost sucked out when they open one door because of a hole in the hull. She blocks it with a tablet Jim pushes to her, and Jim uses a liquid sealant to further seal the hole. The area pressurizes, and they then learn the fusion engine exhaust has to be manually vented. The manual override won't work, Jim has to get into a space suit and go outside to fix it. He has to go into the exhaust passage to open a flap, but it won't stay open unless Jim holds it open so the manual vent will work. Now desperate not to lose Jim, Aurora argues with him over the radio, but she pulls the lever. Jim is pushed out, his tether breaks, and there is a hole in his suit. He tells Aurora goodbye, she runs to get into a space suit and looks for him. She retrieves Jim by grabbing his rope, but when they get inside, he is unresponsive. She drags him to the infirmary, and the auto doc says Jim is dead. Aurora uses Gus wristband and overrides the code to get the machine to resuscitate Jim. He is alive, and she is relieved and overjoyed. Later, things are back to normal on the ship. Jim works on the auto dock and tells Aurora he found that using the command override, he could put her back in hibernation in the infirmary, but he would be alone again. Aurora chooses to stay awake with Jim and make a life with him on the ship together. 88 years later, it's the end of the voyage, and the captain and crew awake and come to the grand concourse to find a huge tree, lots of trailing vines and vegetation, birds flying, and a cabin. Aurora's voiceover reads her story to the passengers, explaining how they made a good life where they were.